with tea quilts and I'm here today to do a block called Rangers Pride and this block is a partial seam block and I will talk about that when we get to that point and also I got a lot of comments on my last block about cutting seven eighths of an inch and seven eighths of an inch is a regular standard quilting seam if you're making half square triangles you have to use the off measurements of an eighth to get the finished size there are many ways around that that's why sometimes you will see where I will paper piece my half square triangles other times I may use my die cutting system and then other times I will cut the square an eighth of an inch larger and just square it down and then you can also cut it the exact size if you know your quarter inch measurement is accurate and then you can just sew it and then you don't have to do any of those trimming steps that are required for some of the ones that I previously mentioned. Now with this block I am going to give you the pattern again on my website. My point this time is that my pattern is written with one set of instructions and then I am substituting a different way of getting to the same method when possible so there's one fabric your fabric B that's just a rectangle and there isn't anything that you have to sew to get to that size so we'll just be cutting the size B so let me just start off with what I have on my cutting diagram and then I will show you what I am substituting for that as you can see in the diagram, A is actually the middle triangle of a flying geese unit. And I have chosen to do my flying geese using the quilt in a days method. Now, I don't have my two and a half by four and a half inch flying geese ruler tool, but I'm still going to go ahead and use those directions that the quilt in a day uses and I'm going to use a regular ruler to square them up and I'll show you how I'm going to do that later. So for my A piece, if I'm using the quilt in the days method, I need an A square, I need an A square that's cut five and one half inches square. Next over here on the wall, I need four B patches that are cut two and one half by six and a half. The B unit is just a rectangle. There is no substitute for that. And so, let me tilt you down. There is no substitute for my B. I'm cutting those two and a half by six and a half, just like stated on the pattern. And then the pattern also tells me that I need four of those. Now for my C pieces, they're telling you to cut eight patches that are two and seven eighths. In order to get those eight patches, you're going to cut four squares, two and seven eighths, and then you're going to cut it once diagonally and you'll end with your eight pieces. Those pieces are the outside edges of your flying geese unit. So that is my square C that I have substituted over here. It's the background fabric because my flying geese points are using the background fabric and I have cut one seven inch square that is it using the flying geese method so I flipped my paper onto the back side for my pattern and now we are going to cut the fabrics for the D unit and the D unit is half square triangles that are used to make a pinwheel block so you will need eight pieces of fabric for that. So what they're telling you to cut is a four and seven eighths inch square and then to cut it once diagonally. For this one, in order to get four of each fabric, your main print and your background, you need to cut two four and seven eighths inch squares from each fabric and then cut 
all four of those squares once diagonally and you will end with your half square triangle. Now I'm going to flip the pattern back over so we can see D on the color chart and then I'm going to talk about what I substituted. So as you can see in the very center of the block you have eight D's that are rotating around in a circle. Those are the pieces that you would cut from your four and seven eighths inch squares and you're just making half square triangles. Now this is one where you can use any method that you like to make your half square triangles. I normally would use thangles or my triangulation CD, triangles on a roll, but you can also just cut these either with die cutting. If you've got a four inch finish half square triangle die, you can also cut these squares a little bit bigger that one eighth inch I was talking about earlier and then you can trim those down. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut my D blocks five inches and then I am going to square them down. I'm just doing this because I want to try to use the block lock ruler. I have had it for a, maybe two years and haven't used it yet. So that is why I am using this tool. Now going from my cutting instructions that I made up in EQ, you would cut 24 pieces of fabric. Using the substitutes that I have on the opposite side, on the left side, I've only cut 10 pieces. Yes, I will have to do some squaring up and I will have to do some more cutting as I go along, but to initially start, I've got a faster start rate. If you're making a lot of blocks, maybe this is something that might be a benefit for you. I'm just showing you some optional ideas here. So we're going to start sewing these units and we're going to start with the flying geese units. So let me clear off some of the things on my design wall before we start. To start making the flying geese units, I am going to draw diagonal lines with a pencil on the right side of my background from corner to corner. One diagonal line corner to corner on the right side. And then I am going to take my five inch print fabric and I'm going to draw a line diagonally corner to corner on the wrong side. And the reason why we're doing that is because you want to be able to see these lines and I'm just going to zoom into this corner here. We want to be able to line up our smaller square on top of the larger square and we want to make sure that we have an even amount around all four sides of the square that's left over. When you do that, you're going to go to your sewing machine, sew one quarter of an inch on both sides of the line. Once you have sewn on both sides, at this point your block could be a little cattywampus because we are working with larger pieces. If it is, I recommend you go ahead and press it with an iron. It makes a big difference before you cut it. And now, after you pressed it with an iron, I want you to cut on the line that you drew. Once you cut on the line that you drew, you'll end up with two weird looking half square triangles. So the two bottom triangles are what you will end up with once you have cut on the drawn line. From there, you're going to press towards your background fabric. After you press towards your background fabric, I want you to lay your two pieces out like, so, like shown. And then I want you to flip the right piece over on top. So I've just cut the film so that I could flip the right piece over to the top. I also drew a line diagonally from corner to corner on just the top piece. I don't need it on both pieces. The purples are across from each other they're not touching each other. And notice that the corners do not match up on my light prints. You can see where they've been folded back and they do not line up. Over here, your corners all line up, but they're not matching in the corners where the background prints meet. So once you've done that, I want you to sew again one quarter of an inch on both sides of the line 
and you'll end up with this unit here where I have sewn on both sides of the line and again I'm going to cut on the drawn line and I'm going to go do that step I'm so I'm on my cutting mat and I am going to show you that I am going to cut this apart I've already gone and pressed it Okay, so now I have my two pieces apart and I want to just open it before I press it to show you what's happening here. This is the unit that you're going to end up with and we want to press our seams toward the background. In order to do that, I want you to put a snip somewhere in the middle between the two and this snip will not interfere with your block integrity because it won't even be in the quilt so I want to snip up to the stitching line and again I'm going to take this and approximate the center and snip now I am going to use my wooden iron and I am actually going to press towards the background fabric and so I went up to that slit. Then I'm going to turn it around and do the exact same thing on the other side. And when I turn it over, I've got the seams going opposite of each other. And that's exactly what we want. And so we will do the same thing with this one. We're going to press toward the background, turn it around, and press again towards the background. And I like to flip it over just to make sure things are where I want them, and then I can go back down the entire line. Okay. So now our next step is we want to square these up, and we want to make these into four flying geese units we're actually going to cut this section out so we can make a geese unit so now we're going to square out our flying geese units and if you have the quilt in the day two by four geese ruler it would make it so much easier because you will just take your ruler and place it onto your fabric and it will line up with the with the seam lines and I'll just show you that with one that's not the correct size so I have one here that's a lot smaller it actually should be used to make one and a half by three so the flying geese ruler from quilting the day has this little triangle to tell you where to put this ruler and once you put it in there if it's the correct size, of course, you would just cut on two sides. I don't have this size flying geese ruler from quilting a day. I think I have it, but I don't know where it is. It's probably in a project. So what I'm going to do is put my two and one quarter, which is the center of four and a half, right at this point. The next thing I want to make sure is that I have four and a half mark ending right at the seam where the two fabrics intersect and then I want to make sure over here that I have the two and a half inch mark in that position and that will let me know that I am cutting very straight and accurate so I now have my four and a half inch point over here I now have my two and a half inch point meeting here and at the top I have my one quarter inch at the top point. Now what I can do is I can cut across the top, remove that piece and we're going to cut this side later and I can go ahead and cut this side. 
Now I want to just rotate my board. And now I'm just going to square this up to two and a half by four and a half. Just using the measurements from my square up ruler. And there you have a perfect flying geese unit. So now I need to do that three more times and I'll just leave the camera rolling but I'll speed it up. So there you have my four flying geese units and they are perfect because they were squared up after the fact instead of stitched, pressed, and maybe have some stretching during those particular processes. So now we are going to go to our next units which are the half square triangles. For our half square triangles we have opted to cut them one eighth of an inch larger and then we're going to square them up. And I will be using the block lock ruler. This is my first time using this ruler, so we will experience it together. And what I have done is on the wrong side of my background square, I have drawn a line diagonally corner to corner, and I have placed it right sides together with the print. Once that's done, you are going to sew on both sides of the diagonal line, one quarter of an inch. And then from there, we are going to cut on that diagonal line. So let me get a ruler here. And I would press this with an iron before I cut. If I think when the pieces are large, they get a little cattywampus. But I'm just going to go ahead here for the sake of videotaping. And then from here, I would go to the iron, set my seams, and then I would press this towards... The print because we're actually using the block lock ruler so you need to have it pressed towards your dark fabric not your back and so I just used my wooden iron just to get those done quickly without having to cut here so I will put these aside and go press those and I have two here that I have already pressed and so I am going to now square this up. Now before I square these up, I do want you to know that there is a learning curve to this ruler. And I haven't mastered it yet. I actually cut one of my squares the wrong size. It's right here. It should be four and a half. And I had to actually square it up to four inches. So let me turn it around so you can see the difference. So yes, there is a learning curve with this ruler. So when you first get it, you may have some wasted half square triangles that you're making until you get a good grasp of this ruler. So I don't know if this is going to be able to get in the camera all the way. So let's see. Okay. So this ruler has a grid line here. I have my finger running in it. And you are going to put this so that this, you're going to place the ruler so that this point is going to end up at the top of your half square triangle and then it locks in. Now, on t when I went and saw the demo, you could spin this. I could not get this to spin at all. I tried various different ways and I'm not even going to even try to do that anymore in this video. But what you want to do is get as close to your corner without going over the edges. But you want to make sure that you've got your four and a half included inside. Because we're now going to square these up to four and a half. So then you cut on both sides. And I go ahead and use my rotary cutter to get my scragglies if I have any. And then I just spin my board. I could not get this to spin for me how 
it was spinning in the demo when I purchased the ruler. So now I'm just going to slide my ruler down, put my four and a half inches on the edges. So now I have the four and a half inch here and over here on the ruler. And now I'm going to square up my other two sides. So I will do the, uh, the next one. I only have one more to do. So I got to turn my ruler again. And when I place this ruler, I want to put this grid so that it slides in and lock onto that actual seam line. Then I want to make sure that I'm up enough that I can get my four and a half in. I don't have a whole lot of room here for trimming. And I like to try to move my stragglies as much as I can because when I turn it, I want to make sure I can see the edge of my, the edge of that block to know that it's on the four and a half inch line. When I turn this ruler, I'm sliding it down. And now I've got to make sure I push the ruler up so that it still nests into that seam. But I want my four and a half to be out here. And when that's done, this four and a half is now on the edge. I can go ahead and cut my remaining two sides. So that's how you would use the block lock ruler. You could actually use any square up ruler and do this. So let me move this ruler and just use a regular square up ruler as well. And I'll just use one of these. I did not press it yet but we can still use it. So I just basically put this diagonal line on the diagonal line of my seam from corner to corner and I just want to make sure that everything I have four and a half under this ruler without being off the top edge. You square up both sides, pull back I get rid of my scragglies, turn my block, and then now I'm going to line up four and a half on these edges here. So I still have my diagonal line going through the middle. I now have four and a half on the edges, so I can go ahead and trim the remaining two sides. And that's how you square up with a regular square up ruler so it's all in your preference as to what you would like to do the lock block does keep it from moving and but i think it's a little learning uh, curve to it as well so we're done with our half square triangles and i just have some here to show you so we're going to go to the design board after this here are my completed units. I have everything set up and I have my block displayed. And I do want to say though that as I continue to cut half square triangles, I think I've cut about 10 now with the block lock ruler. And I noticed that it did get a lot easier once you get accustomed to using it. I do think it's better to stand up and cut when you use this ruler so that you can see over the top of the ruler or be standing over it. I was sitting down in my sewing station as I was trying to cut. And maybe my angle was off as well, but I do like the ruler a lot better now that I've used it a little bit more than just three times prior to me videotaping it. This block, you have some options with the fabric choices and you can make this a two color quilt where you use one color in your print and then use your background as another color like you could have used purple and white. You can make it a one color quilt, which is what I am doing here. I'm using a light purple with different purples. You could also 
make it scrappy where you're using all colors of fabric and then you can even make it scrappy where you're using either one tone or two color fabric and so I just want to show you some layouts I have not made a whole lot of flying geese I've only made one other set of flying geese but I want to just flip out a couple of the flying geese and I want to show you what making the pinwheel scrappy will look like so I have replaced two of my flying geese units again I didn't make four sets of those at this point so I don't have all four of them being different but in my centers I did go ahead and do the half square triangles because I was practicing with the block lock ruler and I just wanted you to see that you could also make these scrappy so I'm back and I have put back up my instruction sheet because I want to show you what will happen with the pinwheels when you put this into a setting without any sashing and I just think it's pretty awesome that it makes smaller pinwheels where the blocks meet and so I do plan to make four more blocks so I'm not going to show you the finished block in this setting I am actually going to make my remaining units and I may have to come back to you at another setting because my sewing time for right now has been depleted so I'll come back later I'm back and I've cut and sewn enough pieces to lay out four blocks on the wall because I wanted you to really see what it would look like in a scrappy form and I am going to make this quilt top and I am going to make it scrappy so I will not be sewing all four of these blocks together right now I will finish one block just for this video but I want to add in more purples to uh, distribute the colors more throughout the quilt so I just wanted you to see what it would look like if you had four scrappy blocks together and notice with the pinwheel in the center that's formed when the blocks come together if you want you can make all of your flying geese units match in that particular area as well but I kind of like it scrappy I'm kind of a scrappy person so I'm just going to make all of mine scrappy and so I will sew one block and I'll come back with the finished project I'm back and I haven't quite completed my block because I forgot that this is a partial seaming technique and so I need to just quickly show you that I've done other blocks where we've had partial seams so this is just more of a recap on a partial seam so I'm going to go step in front of the camera so right here you can see where I have my pinwheel sewn and then I also have all four of my flying geese sewn to my two and a half by six and a half inch strip but when I go to sew these together my piece is actually longer than the block itself so what I'm going to do is flip this up and I'm only going to sew like half of the seam to this corner once that corner is sewn it will now be attached but this will be detached and then I'm going to now these two seams meet up I'm going to sew these two pieces together and then I'd go around and do the third one and then I will also add the fourth one and when I finally get the fourth one on this is going to be on the block and then I will flip this back up and continue to sew from the edge to where I started I'm back with my completed block and I just wanted to at least sew one of them together but like I said the remaining ones I will be adding more blocks so I want to make it so that it's very scrappy so I appreciate you all watching and the block on the right is the block that I made last week and I will put a link up for that block as well if you missed it so I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time bye bye Thank you.